Now, it's good to be back. You know it's good that you can uh, talk and laugh. And, uh, and I tell you, when you're not here, you miss it. It's, uh, it seems like your week just is not complete. Um, not that we're under all to be here, but it's uh, it's the blessing of being assembled. We don't assemble ourselves. It's a blessing that he assembles us. And uh, <clears throat> we had nothing to do in that choosing whatsoever. It was by him, and, and it's by his grace. And you know, the longer you walk through this, I read that song the other day, Tis a Point. And I read it 30 years ago. Oh no, it's over 30 years now. I read it then, and I read it now, and it means so much more now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the path that the Lord walks you through. And I'm going to be looking at Job. I've been <clears throat> looking at this, and I and. You know, you start off in the first two or three chapters and it has to be a comfort. It should be a comfort to our hearts. Amen, brother. That Satan was not even able to consider Job until God gave him leave. He could not even consider him as he says in Daniel he formed the light he never created the light he formed it now, he created this sun that we we have out here yeah he created that light but he didn't create the light but then he said <clears throat> he formed the light and he said I created darkness he created evil <clears throat> and that evil cannot even a little elect child of God mm -hmm. that evil can't even consider that little elect child of God unless the Lord gives him leave and when you read that he said yes but you can go this far and that created darkness could go no further <clears throat> And what the Lord gave him change. <clears throat> and they come back and say, well, you can go just a little bit farther. But if you notice, he never went not one, not one millimeter farther than the Lord gave him leave. You read at the end of Job here, and he said he toys with him as a little child plays with a toy. And I'm thankful that that's the God that we worship. That's the God that we have been shown. And being nothing of ourselves, for He brought us to that point. And it's nothing but what we have done. It's what He has done. And that is very pointed out, you know, <laughs> it's amazing that Job was able to answer these three friends and they were friends never think that these three that Job they sat there with him they were friends they were they were trying they were trying to help Job but they could only come to his aid in the way that they had been shown. They could not come to him in any other form or fashion. When Peter went through what he went through, denying and cursing, the Lord said, When thou art converted, what did he say? Strengthen the brethren. So when them brethren 
that the Lord knew he was going to bring to Peter, and in like manner today. <clears throat> I've been there. <clears throat> I know what you're going through. I know what you're, what's happening to you. Mm -hmm. And it's because the Lord, <clears throat> he's brought this about, and in that declaration, he, he has woven it together as a tapestry. And that it is a perfect tapestry. And that is shown forth here in this book of Job. Job could answer those three friends because they were not coming to him <clears throat> in what he was actually going through. <clears throat> to, very, to make it very, very simple would be to say, all three of them come to him in the avenue of you have sinned. You have done something. They were looking at it in a punishment manner. Well, I was looking at it in a chastisement manner. And I'm not so sure that's even the way that it is. Now, you can go to Proverbs 3 and Hebrews 10, and it says, <clears throat> him, I don't want, where's that at? Hebrews 10, 29, is that it? I don't want to paraphrase that. talks about if he doesn't chastise then you are a bastard that's, 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 that's what it said that wasn't the verse you all read it Proverbs 321 I think you all know the verse <laughs> and I was looking at Job as chastisement and I was thinking about it this morning it wasn't chastisement either Job was able to answer those three because they were coming at him from the same point of view every single time. But the gist, the sense of Job is <clears throat> they were, is the Lord, is the Lord saying no, Job, you have not done anything. Yes, you, you have been upright, but I am showing you, and I'm going to go through Elihu here, because if you make note of this, Job could not answer Elihu, nor could he answer the Lord. Elihu is as a gospel minister. And he said, I will not use the speech Speeches, the speeches of your three friends. I'm not going to use those speeches. They were, they were coming to you in a wrong way and a wrong manner. In essence, Job, as the church, in this book is being shown, you are a sinner. And you are saved only by the amazing grace of of an almighty God. Job had heard of the Lord, but in his experience, as the church is brought to that light, in this experience, he, he is being shown, you are a sinner, and that you are totally depraved. It is the total inability of a man. Job, Job he was giving... He was doing the sacrifices. He was praying. He was doing everything in an upright manner. But the Lord now with this, he took that away. He, he took those worldly doctrines away from him. He stripped him down to the barest. He showed that he was full of sin in those sores that he brought out from him. From the, from, from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head, for that, that, for that is showing that you are a sinner. That's what he is showing Job in this, the total depravity of a man. <clears throat> now, 
uh, Elihu here. Let's start with chapter 32. And I'll read down through here and I'll stop a few places. So these three men ceased to answer Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. They stopped <coughs> talking to Job because Job could answer them. He could say, I have been an upright man. I have been a just man. <coughs> I have done nothing. And he hadn't. So he could answer these men in each manner in which they come to him. <clears throat> but then he says, Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu, the son of Rachel, the Busite of the kindred of Ram, Against Job was his wrath kindled, but why was his wrath kindled against Job? Because he justified himself rather than God. He was, he was saying, I have been upright. I have been Job in, in chapter 7, 20. He recognizes himself as a sinner. He says, I am a sinner, but I have done what is required of me. But the Lord in this is showing him, Job, yes, you have done this. And I know you have heard me. But now I'm going to take you one step further into this light. And you are going to see me now. That is what he is showing this man. And that is what, and I think this happens many times in the life of a child of God. Also, now Elihu had waited till Job had spoken because they were elder than he. 1 Corinthians 15, 46. <clears throat> and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, the last man, howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural and afterward that which is spiritual. <clears throat> this worldly comes first, and then the spiritual. But yet truth is the ultimate elder. <clears throat> now, and Elihu, the son of, I am young and you are very old. I said days should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But it's not by the wisdom of what we see. If anyone <clears throat> would have seen Peter when he was cursing and when he was denying, he's no child of God. But what they're seeing with these natural eyes is not the wisdom of one who made a declaration. He declared that end, and he declared it from the beginning. And there's millions upon millions and millions of those <coughs> beginnings and those endings. And what we see with these natural eyes, because His ways are higher than our ways, and His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. <clears throat> but there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. That treasure, oh, that treasure that is within an earthen vessel. And that's all this is. It's just the dust. <clears throat> every job, every, every job that is created upon the face of this planet in some way circles around dust. Every single job. You point in here, sis was in the education, trucking, nursing, nursing, taxes, <laughs> lawyer, I mean, every single one of them in the utility, it circles around dust in some way or some fashion. Great men are not always wise, neither do the ages understand. Therefore, I will show you mine. I will show you, behold, I waited for your words. I gave ear to your reasons while you searched out what to say. 
Les used to say, we have found out wisdom. Now he hath not directed me. I answer him with, he says right here in verse 14, I will, <coughs> neither will I answer him with your speeches. This, this minister who this spirit up here is giving the inspiration, <coughs> they were not inspired by the same spirit. They were looking with their natural eyes, which is exactly what the Armenians do. Each and every person in here <coughs> has been through that. And there are some with natural eyes look and say, well, he must have done something wrong. He must have done something. But the Lord, <coughs> but, but the Lord who brings it all together. He, he is the one that brings it about. He is the one that sees the path now. He is here now. And he is tomorrow in now. And he is thousands of years from now if he, if he keeps it. For he is always in the present. And he's walking you through it for a purpose worthy of himself. They were amazed. <coughs> They answered no more. They left off speaking. For I am full of matter. 21. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's persons, neither let me give flattering titles unto man. And I think in that right there, that's verse 21. I think of that Pharisee up front. And he just, <clears throat> the simple words he said, I'm glad I'm not like that one back there. He was pointing to the little publican in the back that would so, not so much as raise his head. <clears throat> that one went down justified. The one up front stood up there and all he could talk about was everything that he had done for his God. Like he needs anything. He does not need anything from anyone, it does not matter. He has brought it about. He is so far beyond what anything in this little mind, only by the Spirit and that faith that is given us, can, 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 can we even catch a glimpse of His magnitude and His glory and His power and His mercy. It is only through, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, because it is a gift of God. And it says, not of works, lest what? Lest any man should boast. And he stood up front and said, look what I have done. But that man in the back could not even raise his head and look to, 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 to the sky. That right there is the difference. And he, like you, is saying, I will not give flattering titles. I will not do that. For I know not to give flattering titles. Now he says, Wherefore, therefore, Job, I pray thee, <coughs> hear my speeches and hearken to all my words. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart. And who gives that uprightness? Who is he talking about? Oh, that spirit. That spirit, that's the only way that a man can have any uprightness in him whatsoever. It is by that spirit. And my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. And the only way that there can be any manna handed out to a little child of God, it, it, it will be by that Spirit and it will be knowledge that is handed out clearly. Because you can, a little child of God, that little sheep cannot feed upon the feed that is handed out to goats. They, 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 they will starve to death every single time. The Spirit of God hath made me in the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. <coughs> if thou canst answer me, set thy words in order. Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's stead. I also am formed out of the clay. 
Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid, neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee. I know, I went past okay. that. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> I get it. <laughs> I know. See, his friend, the, those three friends were coming at him and they were laying terror upon him. Mm -hmm. They were saying, you've done something. You must have done something. But there's no terror in that manner to a little child of God. Amen. Not in this instance here. <clears throat> Surely thou hast spoken in my hearing and I have heard the voice now here's what Job said in chapter 33, verses 9, 10, and 11. Job said, I am clean without transgression. I am innocent. Neither is there iniquity in me. Now this, this is what Job is being shown. He was murmuring against God. This is what he is being shown. That is why Elihu was pointing this out and if you go it's in Job it's in chapter 10 and verse 7 that's where he said that behold he findeth occasions against me he counteth me for his enemy he is murmuring against God and he is being shown in this God that is what he is being shown I don't think this is chastisement in the very sense of what chastisement is he, he job is being he, he he is being shown a mighty god a holy god that's why the three friends when they were coming at him and i know i've, I've said this a couple of times but it is the point of it they were saying you're being chastised you are you are being punished. The Lord is not punishing him. He is not chastising. He is his eyes are being opened, and he are, and, and he is being shown a God, and he is being shown his total depravity. Yes, he called himself a sinner, but he had not been shown the total blackness of uh, of himself. That's what's happening here. He putteth my feet in the stocks. Mm -hmm. Behold, in this thou art not just. I will answer thee that God is greater than man. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. Oh, and boy, they'll, they will come at us. They'll come at us if we, if, if we lay the words that God is the author of sin. Oh, it tears them up. <clears throat> Malachi 3.6 I am the Lord. I change not. And what he say, and what and what does he say over here? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. God is not going to give account for anything that in that declaration that he brought forth, and he says, I am the Lord, I change not. James in James the first chapter he says, There is no variableness. Or any shadow of turning. He gives account for nothing that he has done ever. And I've got these wrote down here. Hebrews 4. Naked and open unto him are all things. All things he has laid out. And this is what Job is being shown. Known unto God are all his works. All of his works. <clears throat> The eyes of the Lord in every place. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 19. The counsel of the Lord shall stand. Daniel 4.35. All the inhabitants are reputed as nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Isaiah 14.24. As I have thought... So 
shall it be. Amen. How can you get past that? How can you get past that? As I have thought, so shall it be. And then he's talking, he's over here in Job, and all this has come up, could come upon him in his world and in his and in his life. And here you have this, and you have this this gospel minister, which is the type of what Elihu is here. And he says, For he giveth not account of any. Of his, ma of his matters. For as he has thought, so shall it come to pass. That's why they cause hard shalls. If he says it shall come to pass, it will come to pass. Mm -hmm. And he does not have to give an explanation for any microsecond that has ever been recorded from the beginning to whenever it shall end. He does not have to give one second of, uh, 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 of reasoning for in the fact that he brought it to pass it is righteous and it is judgment and it is a perfect uh, uh, it is perfectly justified for before it was brought forth from a holy and a sovereign God who <laughs> and that is the only reasoning that it was ever brought brought to pass and he does not have to ever give account for any Amen. of his matters. Amen. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, and that may be the law and the grace that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. And what is, what is the natural man's purpose? To worship anything other than who Elihu is bringing forth. <clears throat> we will turn to that natural man every single time. And the Lord will draw us from that purpose. And it is through pride. <clears throat> now listen to where he's putting Job now. In verse 18, he keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from per perishing by the sword. Now this is where Job is getting to. This is where he is. And this is where a child of God will be. In that miry pit, he chastens also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain so that his life abhorreth bread and his soul dainty meats. And when you see that abhorreth bread and his soul dainty meats, he's talking about those doctrines, those worldly doctrines that, 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 that are handed down. There are times, and like in these friends back here, <clears throat> when, when you read them, you will hear things that sound right, but then there's always a twist where they're bringing in the worldly workings of a man. In every single instance, it is there. And that is those dainty meats. And that is that bread that is abhorred. And that's like I was saying before, that is the food of goats. And a sheep cannot feed upon it. That's why Elihu said, I will, I will not give you the speeches of those three men. Because there's a spirit where Elihu is coming from that Holy Spirit is directing and is guiding him. That's why he will not use those three speeches for the spirit is leading and, and directing him. And he said, his flesh is consumed away. Now listen in verse 22. Where is Job at? Yea, his soul draweth near unto the grave and his life to the destroyers. But then verse 23, there is a change. If there be a, me a messenger. Oh, who's he talking about? What messenger is he talking about? What messenger are you looking for? Look where Job is. 
he says he's unto the grave and his life is in uh, unto the unto the story. He's in that miry clay. He's deep within that miry, miry clay. And one more time, the Lord will bring him back up. But if you read that, it says if there be a messenger. But where is that messenger? Those next two words are the key. With me. That's where that messenger it is with me. That's why I've, I've never agreed with that poem of the footprints in the sand that there were two footprints and then there was one set of footprints because that's when Christ was carrying you. There's ever there's only one set of footprints. There's never been two set of footprints because he is always carrying you. Oh, there's times that he may hide himself but he's always there. And he's always got his hand upon his little children and he is guiding and he is directing you even though you can't see him and you don't know he's there there's one set of footprints because it said if there be a messenger and there is a messenger and he is with me and see that me says it don't say with us it says with me because it's personal Paul said oh wretched man and he said that I am he made it personal that I am and each and every one of his elect. That's what they say. Oh, wretched man that I am. And that's what Job is being shown here. The total depravity of a man. The total inability of a man. And, and, and at the end of this, he and at the end of this, he says, Oh, I had heard of thee. I had heard of thee, but now. But now I see thee, and I see I, because I've been shown what I am. And it is a total depravity of a man. Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am. And he said, if there be a messenger, but it says with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show man his uprightness. And you could drop down to verse 29. Lo, all these things worketh. Now look who it says who works them. It ain't man that works them, is it? It ain't man that works them. Have you read man in this from what Elihu, and if you continue reading this, you will not see man in it. And then the Lord comes to, it says, I'll finish, Lo, all these things work with God oftentimes with man because he will, that conversion, it'll happen and it'll happen and it'll happen and it'll happen. But every single time in our weakness, he is made strong for you are shown he is the strength. That is where the strength is. And it says, Lo, God oftentimes <clears throat> worketh God oftentimes. All these things worketh God oftentimes with man. <clears throat> Let's go to the end of it now. Chapter 40 and verse 3. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. And then if you go on over <clears throat> to chapter 42. Oh, nerdy church, there's just so much here. I know that thou canst. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Ch 